Hey, crochet friends. Welcome to Sugar Joy. This is Cindy. And today I'm going to share with you how I made this easy to make, lovely little throw blanket that actually has a built in border, a built in berry border. And for the complete pattern, head over to daisyfarmcrafts.com where you can get a free downloadable PDF. Or if you prefer, leave a comment saying pattern, please, and I will be happy to provide you with a direct link. So the materials for this project are one skein of Karen One Pound in the light terracotta and I got this at Joann's when it was on sale for $8.99. So uh, it's a, the equivalent of about three skeins. And um, I always buy an extra just in case, but one should do ya. And then I use this Susan Bates eight millimeter bamboo handle hook that I really like and it's very handy for those um, berry stitches because it's got this nice point on the tip and the the shape of the of the hook um, uh, holds onto the yarn really nicely. I don't know how else to describe it. And then you'll also want a pair of scissors and of course a tapestry needle to weave in your end. Now, if you're really good, uh you may only have you know one or two ends two ends one at the beginning one at the end but so the finished size of the blanket is three feet by four feet and that's a nice it's a lap blanket size it's a nice baby blanket size and i actually am using this um as a throw on my chair in my room because I have a my craft room I have a green and orange palette and this just goes nicely with it and um, so my my inspiration for the blanket was my sister had uh, done a really beautiful grid pattern with this berry stitch and if you you know been following along on my channel or you're familiar with Daisy Farm Crafts you might know she's been teaching me to crochet. And so um, the skill level to do a grid was, was, was a little above my pay grade. And so I decided to um, see if I could uh, make a frame, use the berry stitch. And another thing that I'm, I haven't got any experience with yet is doing borders. And so this blanket kind of solved the problem of creating a border without having to go back and do a border. It's just all one. Um, now, I did have to do a little bit of math to figure out how to get it to be, uh, you know, the frame to be in the middle um, and the berry stitches to be distributed evenly around the, the edge. But no worries, I figured it all out and it's in the pattern and you can go to daisyfarmcrafts.com and get a free pattern. So this is an even berry stitch, which means the way this was designed, that the berry stitch is only on one side. It's not on the other side. So it just looks like that on the other side and you have your texture on this side. And that is accomplished by working every other row with a single crochet row. There's a berry stitch row and then there's a single crochet row. And I have also liked using a larger hook, um, the eight millimeter. I think, you know, standard for this weight of yarn is a, more like a five or a six millimeter hook. And I sized up one because my tension, I still seems to be a little bit tight and using a larger hook, uh, you know, takes care of that problem. And I also like that it works up a little bit quicker um, using the larger hook. Um, I did try to do one with the five and a half and um, it was just, a, it, you know, it just wouldn't lay 
flat. And so when I sized up on the hook, it solved the problem, but uh, you most certainly can use a smaller hook and get a denser blanket um, if you're more experienced with uh, you know, adjusting patterns and that sort of thing. But the initial chain count on this blanket is 70. And so that gave me eight spaces on either side to do the berry stitch. Borderless berry, berry border, border berry. Berries on the border, there we go, blanket. So for the sample, I uh, chain 24. And the first row that you do, working in to the first chain space from the hook is a single crochet. So here is our first row of single crochet. And when we get to the end of the row, we chain one and turn. And the way Tiffany taught me was that you turn it like you turn a book page and you so you will turn it the same way um, every time you come to the end of a row and it gives you um, a very nice consistent stitch. So now on our row two we're going to start doing the berry stitch and so this will actually be the back side and the berry will pop out the front here. And so the first stitch in the second row is a single crochet. And then you'll do your berry stitch under the stitch here. You yarn over, insert your hook, pull through a loop, pull through one, yarn over, insert your hook, pull through a loop. So now you have one, two, three, four, five loops on your hook and then yarn over and you want to pull through all five. There we go. And that is your first berry stitch. And so each berry stitch is preceded by and followed by a single crochet. And that gives it this very nice tile looking pattern for the even berry stitch. They're stacked up on top of each other. They look like little squares. I just love them. So there's your berry. And so I'm going to do this one a little bit faster. And I sort of like, you know, pull up a bit to, you know, create an open space for the hook to travel through. So there's the one. And now we'll do another berry stitch. So it's a little bit different than the puff stitch. There we go. So one, two, three. All right. 
So there's our three berry stitches, single crochet. Now the first couple rows of any project, it's very, I found very important to just take your time and get that foundation down because then you can follow along much easier with what you've already crocheted. Now, one important thing to know in order to keep track of your, your count of your berries and your, and your single crochets is that the beginning of every row begins with a single crochet and the end of every row ends with a single crochet. So if you end up with your last stitch being a berry stitch, then you've miscounted someplace and you have to go back and see where you made your mistake and then undo it. <laughs> I had to do that many times. I really had to pay attention. Yarn over. There we go. And so then the last stitch is a single crochet. So I'm in good shape. All my berries should be lined up. And you chain one and then you turn it like a book. And there you go. So you can see you work the berries on the back side and then, you know, make sure you check it that all your berries have a space in the in-between. And then our very first stitch is going to be a single crochet, as is every stitch after that for this row. So we do one row of single crochet after our berry stitch row. So in front of every berry and after every berry is a single crochet. And then after the, the berry stitch row, you do a row of single crochet. So this, where you work the single crochet is in the space after the berry stitch, you work under, and then the space before the berry stitch. is the other place you work the single crochet. So one single crochet, one berry row, another single crochet row, and then we chain one and we turn it like a book. And then we're gonna do berries on the corner. So we've got our three, I'm just going to do three berries in the corner um, and then we'll start building out the frame. And so um, it might come in handy here to mark your stitches. So it's one, two, Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So in that space is where my next berry stitch is going to go. So we just do single crochet across. So in the spot that we have marked with the stitch marker, is where our first berry stitch on the other side of our frame goes. So you can see we've got the beginning of our center square has started. And so we will continue across this row with our single crochet row. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial for the berries on the border baby blanket and um, 
It's very easy. And as I mentioned earlier, if you want the written pattern, you can go over to daisyfarmcrafts.com or comment that you would like me to leave you a link by saying pattern, please. And I will be happy to do that. And make sure and join us on Wednesdays on my channel now for Crochet Sister Chat, where I get to ask my sister Tiffany, who has been crocheting much longer than I have, all of my beginner crochet questions. So thanks for stopping by.